Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash uh, Evening Show right here on Smash FM. We're here on the road outside here in Thornbury. Of course, uh, let's go to our friends up in Brizzy, and it is great to have uh, our favourite author slash uh, musician on the show. Of course, she's actually coming down to Melbourne, and which is fantastic in mid June. Of course, uh, <laughs> her name's May, and she joins right now. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Love that you're in Thornbury. <laughs> now, I have to ask, uh, firstly, tell us a bit about uh, the book that you've got coming out. Great. Well, it's called The Realist Bitch Out. It is a collection of poems that I've written from tw 2018 to 2021. Um, and it's just basically an autobiography, really, um, about my deepest truths. And it's very vulnerable and very real. And I wanted to go from like kind of being the good girl to like not being so good and just, you know, telling people what I think. So it was really a book that I wrote to speak my truth and to say, this is me, you know. When we last had you on the show, um, yeah. you mentioned about uh, one of your other books. Is it a continuation of that book? I've got the other one right here, Coming Home to Yourself. <laughs> yeah. So you remember when we did that? It basically is it kind of towards the end of coming home to yourself I wrote this one as kind of like I'm moving to Melbourne you know I'm dealing with family stuff but towards the end it starts to get a bit more like slam poetry and then realist bitch out is very much like I wrote it to be able to perform it so when I get on stage it wasn't just like a you know a tumbler you know indie poem you know just on the internet it, it was meant to be written to be performed it's interesting you've mentioned that because I guess is it did you try to treat it as if it was like a I guess like a drama play in some ways for I guess for especially like you know the teenagers out there that you know are in high school and they do drama is it something similar to that because by the sounds of it it is something similar ish as you mentioned yeah. you're writing it for like um for book but actually to to act it out. Yeah, that's interesting you picked up on drama. I actually did drama in high school, so that was a big part of my learning process, I guess. But I saw myself more as a comedian when I was writing it. Like, you know, I wanted to make the lines, like, one-liners that could be, like, funny jokes, you know, or, like, you know, things that would make people laugh and that were witty and that would make you think, like, you know, you hear a lot of poetry and it's just, like, someone's diary. And mine's, like, my diary too, but I just, there had to be an element of humour or, like, wit or like intelligence like I wanted to make people think outside the box a bit and not just be you know like what about this perspective and what about this you know I'm always kind of playing devil's advocate in this book of like trying to show both sides what's the reaction been like in uh in Queensland <laughs> yeah pretty good <laughs> I knew you would ask me this so I had I had a couple of responses one woman said it was challenging but I loved it and I was like all right I like that <laughs> And then, yeah, it's been, you know, it's it, like it's a polarizing book. So it's been up and down, but it's nice when people are like, I really love it, you know. But if they haven't, I think that it's like very obvious too. So I don't know. I did my best. Mm. Now, of course, you're bringing that road show down here to Melbourne uh, coming up in June next month, uh, which is very, very close. Yes. Very um, tell us. And I know you've sent me the link uh, to get tickets. Now, I'm hoping I can get there, um, as I, I was mentioning before uh, we came on today. Um, you know, for everyone out there, whereabouts is it? Now, considering I'm in Thornbury, uh, I'm assuming the location you're talking about is not too far away from where I am. No, it's only a suburb away in Northgate. Um, it's happening at Open Studio on the June the 22nd, 5 to 7 p.m. So I've got Joyce Pressure opening and then I'm going to be performing. So she'll do about 40 minutes, have a break, and then I'll do an hour and maybe a little bit longer. But I'm excited to do it at Open Studio because this is the first, I mean, the first place that I ever like found as an open mic in Melbourne was Open Studio. I remember I caught a train and I walked up a set of stairs and you could see the the CBD, like the city. And I was like, where am I? Like, this is really cool. But I was lost. And I walked into this little like French cafe and that was open studio. 
and this girl read a poem like she read her poetry and I was like this is great and I spoke to her afterwards because my goal was to be able to write my own poetry like that's really why I'd moved was like to be able to speak my truth and um yeah and then she told me she'd written these poems and she was like you know just start writing and it'll come out so I just went okay I'm just gonna write and I just had these tiny little poems and that's what coming home to yourself became but she was like oh I don't really want to capitalize it off off it I just want to write poems and I was like I'm gonna capitalize off it I want to make it into something tangible I mean not that there's that much money in poetry but I wanted to have a book where I could like have something physical you know like so that if I look back that there's a legacy you know that if I read it that like I can remember the things I went through and like mm. that's what my art really is it's just like a legacy to remember like I lived my life and I lived it to the fullest you mentioned about obviously it's there at open studio which when you mentioned to me I actually thought I actually thought I was like oh it must be a studio in Norco, which I don't know anything about but now you just explain where, uh, what it is and where it is. So um, I you completely can remember that now. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, kind of sad because I think they might be closing next year and it's been around for like 20 years. So it's it's kind correct. of like a, mm. a very significant music venue in Melbourne. Other than Melbourne, are you doing any other, you know, shows like this other than obviously your home state? Yeah, so I already did the home stuff. I did Brisbane and Sunny Coast and I did Gold Coast. Um, but I am doing another show on the 23rd, the day after, near Bendigo, like in Heathkit, Cornella, at Shiraz Republic at 2 o'clock. So that's just a free show outside. Um, yeah, I played there like three years ago, so it was really nice and just chill vibes, chill country vibes. So that's the day after the 23rd, Shiraz Republic. How's the reactions been like for that? For Bendigo or for the um or all of it? Uh for both. Yeah, good. I, a lot of my friends and fans are really excited to see me, so I feel good about that. Like everyone's pretty keen. I'm keen. I've just been prepping for it a lot, so yeah, it's exciting. I'm also this is very unrelated, but I can't wait to go to my favorite restaurant, Pizza Faro. They just expanded and made another <laughs> another chain in Rooney Ponds. And I'm like, I'm your biggest fan. Let me run your marketing program. Like, I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to the food. Uh now I know I ask this every year I've had you on the show since you moved okay. back to Brizzy. Are you coming back to Melbourne to live at least? Now, the, I know the reason I asked be, this because you had, you did move to Melbourne from Brizzy. Yeah. And yeah. when I had you on the show the very first time, obviously you wanted to stay, but obviously with COVID and all that sort of jazz, that didn't happen. Uh, but is that something you want to do down the track? Because we all miss you down here. Are you just predicting the future, Will, every time? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're a good future predictor. I mean, I've been considering it again, so you must be reading my mind or channeling something, you know, you're tapping in with your psychic abilities. Like, But we'll see. I don't know. It depends. It depends how I go financially up here. I mean, I, I came up to study as well, and I've done a lot of study with kinesiology and just like the natural therapy stuff. So I'm kind of reaching the end of that. So we'll see. We'll see how I go, you know. But I've got like healers and mentors to learn from up here. So I kind of just go where I'm led, you know. I feel like I did, I just, I'm just going where I'm led. We're going where I'm being led. I'm like, all right, I'll follow. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't mean I didn't mean to uh vision what, what was might happen already. So uh Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll end up staying, maybe I'll go. We'll see. I haven't fully decided yet, but I'm I'm mm. staying open to possibilities. Other than you mentioned obviously Queensland and Victoria that you're doing shows. Are you hoping to do like, you know, New South Wales, like Sydney or Adelaide or like anywhere else in the yeah, country? So I, been... I already did a bit of New South Wales in, in February. So okay. I did um and Gold Coast. So I did a Gold Coast show and I was meant to do a show in Tormina, but that got cancelled and I ended up, but I still went to Port Macquarie 
And I sold one book in Port Macquarie, but the guy was like, this is like erotica. And I was like, no, it's not. But okay, if you want to think that, it was just like, yeah. But he was into it. He liked it. He bought it. So even though it was one person, I was like, you know, if one person reads it and gets something out of it and thinks it's good, that's all I, you know, care about. Mm. So that was that was good. And I did a whole road trip down to Port Macquarie. I didn't make it all the way to Sydney, even though I was like this close. But um, I don't have as many Sydney contacts anymore because I used to, um, I my cousins used to live in Sydney. So I used to have somewhere to go when I was in Sydney. I always try to go to places where I can sleep. You know, it's very musician-like, <laughs> but uh, save on accommodation. But yeah, I, did, I don't have that many people in Sydney anymore. And I've been avoiding it, but maybe I will one day. And one of my friends is sad I'm not going to Adelaide, but I think I'm going to wrap it up after this round of shows because... I am recording my next EP in August yeah. up in Queensland. So I'm starting a whole new electronic soul thing. Um, and I've got to focus my energy onto that. And I've started this book tour in August, you know, and I'll basically finish it at the start of July. So it's been nearly a year that I've been promoting it. So yeah. I'm feeling like I want to wrap it up, you know. Well, I'm glad you actually answered my next question I was going to ask about music uh, because, you know, just said in the intro about our favourite uh, music artist slash author. So, uh, <laughs> no. so I'm glad you answered that question for me. So yeah. uh, now you mentioned about uh, the person who's going to be supporting you right at the start of the show, mm -hmm. um, this yep. Melbourne show. Um, So tell us a bit about her and um and... Are you going to hopefully, I, I know that you're going to do a longer, bigger set after she does it, but you're going to be including her in any of that? Yeah, so Joyce Pressure is doing the support act and I've known her since I moved to Melbourne, so we have a long history. She was one of the first musicians after my friend Kate that I met um, randomly in St Kilda. There used to be this jam night in St Kilda that someone told me to go to and I was like all right and I didn't really venture to the south side much when I lived in Melbourne. I was more on the north side only if I, I had to cross the river which is classic punt road. Anyway I crossed the river to go to and I'm really glad I did that day because I wouldn't have met Joyce if I hadn't crossed gone to St Kilda that day and um yeah, she was so inclusive, like, and I mean that in, in the truest form. Like, she was, she would invite me to her house and we'd do sing-alongs and jams and we'd get, we'd there'd be about four of us that would do the jams and stuff and the sing-alongs. But we all kind of supported each other, like Tracy and Jess and um, me and, and Joyce. And it was like a really good community. And then uh, Joyce and I did a really cool show once together for my Still Bleeding tour. So the first e. I put out in Melbourne which was really my second EP I did um at Wesleyan and we did a Ballarat show this is a really funny story and we drove to Ballarat and it was in Babushka bar which isn't a bar anymore but at the time it was so funny there was a dog that would bark throughout our set when we'd finish so when the audience would clap the dog would bark and we were like this is and they had a neon sign out the front that was like Maya still bleeding sing e single launch or I mean EP launch and there's a, like a picture of me like with this giant like like <laughs> like a coat on and like bangs and gloves just like pointing to the neon sign and smiling like it was just oh. like I need to dig out that photo but it was hilarious and then yeah the owner was funny and there was it was like seven people came and it was the strangest gig but we loved it <laughs> like we fucking loved it <laughs> never forget but yeah I'll never forget that gig with Joyce and we and we had a fun time going on the road trip um yeah just like good times like uh, yeah so yeah she's really a ride or die she's a real bitch and she's gonna be supporting me and she's a Gemini too I'm excited that we've got two Geminis doing a whole night of poetry and music you know what more could you want yes that's very true very you know true. you're gonna get entertainment yeah yes so okay you mentioned that you're doing an EP coming up very soon yes uh, recording one in August yes um so have you, I guess going into this year, were you already setting yourself, you know, to finish up this 
um, book tour that you're doing, uh, as you mentioned, it's going to finish, uh, you know, right around May, start of July, I think you said. Yeah. Um, and then you're going on to music. Was this all planned? Was that something you wanted to do at the start of the year? And have you really, have you decided on what you want to do, like, in the future? Are you hoping to do, like, something similar like this? Like, do half music, half book? I love it. You're like, were you the mastermind behind all of this? Well, actually, I was hoping to do a few more shows of the book launch. Like, I only have to sell 18 more, 19 more books and I've broken even. So I'm, I need to get to my goal. That's kind of where I'm at with my goal. But I... I thought I would do more shows. I was hoping to maybe do more in Yak and Dander, Albury, that area, like okay. North Victoria, but it's quite expensive to book flights there. And I feel like I'm going to have to skip it this time because I'm getting ready for the, for the, to record. So I'm kind of just feeling like this will be good, like the closing of the book launch. And I've nearly said everything I have to say, but to answer your question, I mean, this book took me four years to write. This is four years worth of work. Like, so I don't think I'll be writing a book anytime soon again. Like I'm going to need another four years worth of life experience to write more. Because like, you know, writing a book, you have to live your life. There's a lot of living, you know, involved. But my next plan really is to get this EP out and then do a tour. So the next EP is called Decided On Me. It's about loyalty. It's a very revenge Scorpio album. And I'm excited to do like the producer I've got really gets gets it. So I think it'll be really good once we record that. And then I'm hoping to just, I don't know if I'm going to make like a physical copy of this one. I just want to focus on digital for the EP. But mm. after that, I'm hoping to record an album, like another album, because I have another 15 songs in my catalog. I've got a lot of music. So I'm just doing it one step at a time, but the next step is really record the songs and then maybe I'll do a single launch if I can this year, just like squeeze one more in towards the end of the year. But if not, I mean, I hope so. I hope I get like at least one single out this year, even if it's not the whole thing. And then maybe do more next year and then start recording again. So yeah, recording is really the next plan once I'm not going to put out a book until I've got something really substantial to say, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at. But I'll never stop writing and I'm always writing poetry in my notes and, you know, it's just like part of my process now. So I have to ask this then, doing um, poetry and, you know, the book and music, I know most of the poetry and, I guess, music almost coincide to each other. Exactly. Um. I So the books, I guess I'm going back to your first book uh, that we had early in the year. Are you going to use any of that in your songs that you're going to have coming up? Well, the first one, a lot, all of these songs from the first one went into the I'll Get There album. So those are massively linked, those two. Like the poetry and the words, they all, I literally took words from the poetry and made it into songs. But with The Realist Bitch, it's more like, it's not as, there are some Actually, I don't know if there are any passages in the new stuff. I kind of wrote the next EP in COVID in 2020. And I wrote it like very, I think I told you this, but I wrote it as um just like titles. Like I was just like, I just want to think of cool titles and then just make a thing like concrete car park. What were the other ones I had? It was like uh, mm. decided on me, went into the thing, real friends, conditional love, nice bitch and then the fifth one was keep the truth in but like yeah. I literally just wrote out names just to see like what and then I wrote songs according to those names which I've never done but it really worked well um but I try to change up the process a bit because the first process was all out of poetry the second process was just I'm gonna write titles and then make songs so there's no really one way to create you just do your best and you know roll with it mm. So we'll finish with these last two um, before I let you go. For everyone out there that should get tickets for your Melbourne show on Saturday, the 22nd of June at 5 p.m. at the Open Studio in Orchid, yeah. um, how can I go about it? Obviously, we'll share that link um, as well. Uh, but how how can I go and get it? Great. So it's on um, humanticks.com. Uh, on my website myofficialmusic.com if you go into shows and you click on the open studio there is a link attached to that also on my instagram myofficialmusic 
the link tree links you to the show as well. So if you just use my platforms, you'll find the link. It's easier that way than trying to find the link. But Realist Bitch Out Book Tour also will probably get you there. We will share that as well. So um, uh, as well here on Smash FM. And and finally, I've got to finish with this last one. Have you got uh, in, 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 in your uh, book sales um, that you're doing now, um, how can I go about purchasing it other than obviously coming to actually come to your show? Yeah, can they awesome. get it online? Yes, they can on my website as well. So myofficialmusic.com. And if you go to the shop section, it's in there. It is also on Kindle as well, but I recommend the physical copy because it feels very nice and it's um, <laughs> it's a matte cover and it feels very good. So, yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, look, as I said, I'm going to try and get there myself. Yeah. Um, after my sporting event, uh, or, or or even on my way to my sporting event, um, but uh, yeah, it'd be great yeah. to see you there. Correct, correct. But uh, mate, thank you so much for reaching out to us, and especially giving up some of your time tonight to join us. Uh, can't wait to see you down here in Melbourne, um, again in mid June, and uh, and especially to uh, uh, support him and what you do like I've done the last couple of seasons, uh, last couple of years, especially with your music and obviously now with your book. Yeah. Thank you so much for supporting me. I was going through the years and it's been about three years since we did the last one. So I really appreciate it. No worries. And that's uh, May there joining us. Uh, they're talking about her new book. Uh, as you mentioned, we'll put all the details up on how you can purchase the book as well as getting the tickets for the Melbourne show um as well and of course if you're in the the beautiful gold uh the gold fields up there in bendigo of course uh we'll also put up that sunday show as well um uh, on sunday afternoon in mid-june there's more on the smash emily show right after this don't go away here on the 10th year celebration <laughs>